I recently saw Child's Play. In preparation for the new Chucky series coming to Sci-Fi in USA, I figured I might as well just do the original 1988 Child's Play. The first Child's Play starts off with, wait, Tom Holland? Like, Spider-Man Tom Holland? Hello, Peter. The movie starts off with the cop chasing a bad guy. Three things in the scene. Why did he throw the sweater though? It was probably a birthday present that he didn't like. They call him the Strangler, but that's false because he has a gun. But how did the police not notice him though? He shoots at the lock? But does that work in real life? I would've just aimed for the window, but I've never been a criminal. Wait, why was he just standing there though? He was dodging them before, so why not now? I don't understand why he had to announce that he's dying. Oh god, I'm dying. You hear that, you son of a bitch! Shouldn't he be searching for the voice of the echoing through the toy store? And how big is this toy store that you start to hear echoes? He looked pretty small outside. Also, why is he screaming? Isn't he supposed to be hiding? And why is the cop frightened? As he's walking and dying, he makes a bunch of noise, which the cop still doesn't find, even while he's performing the ritual. And surprisingly, nobody talks about the lightning that happened literally in 34 freaking seconds. He successfully transfers his soul into the doll, and the next morning we meet Andy. I'm not gonna question Andy Barkley's acting since he's just a kid, and as far as his childish shenanigans, they kind of awed me, so I'll let it slide for now. It's Andy Barkley's birthday and mom gives him a big good guy sized box filled with clothes? What? What a freaking tease. Why does she need that big ass box just to have a couple clothes inside? Karen is at work when her friend decides to take her to the alley so she can purchase a good guy doll from a peddler outside her work. I don't know why Maggie is all of a sudden having doubts when she's the one who shouldered the doll in the first place. Yeah, Karen, it's too much money. No, it isn't. You have no idea how much Andy wants this doll. But we don't even know if the damn thing works. Also, Maggie's character is just amazing. Can we just appreciate that? Hey, hold on, you! <laughs> how do we know the damn thing isn't stolen, huh? I steal this! Yeah, steal this yourself! Maggie, I think I dated him. Also, the boss is kind of a savage in this movie. Chill out, would you, Walter? Huh? I'll take care of Andy for you. Maggie, you can't do it. Don't be silly. It'll be the hottest date I've had in months. I can't imagine why. Later that day, Andy's mom brings home his present. This isn't groceries. Also, how did Andy not guess that? That doesn't even look remotely close to groceries from what I've seen in cartoons. Chucky finally arrives at Andy's house. Hi, I'm Andy. What's your name? Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. I need ho. <laughs> wow, he's something, isn't he? Later in the evening, Maggie carelessly drags Chucky. Sheesh, no wonder he's a killer. I know Chucky is small, but judging by the POV shot, he runs pretty fast. Why is she waving goodbye at the bus? If I did that in Los Angeles, people would think I'm on crack. Well, it is Chicago, so I'm assuming that the good guy doll wasn't the only thing she bought from the peddler. There you go, lady. May it bring you and your kid a lot of joy. Thank you. She goes upstairs to her apartment to visit the crime scene, while we see the hardworking police doing their job by treating the crime scene like shit. Hey guys, you done, huh? Let's go. Chop, chop. Let's go, everybody. Out of here. And look at the Chicago cop. What? I think I'm calm. You don't give up, do you? I hate blue sand. And I hate people who don't know when to stop. What the- what, uh, Her friend literally just died! What the hell is wrong with you people? It's incredibly sad that Mrs. Barkley doesn't know what simple footprints are. Got any idea what these are? No. It's interesting how a show called Good Guys have so many violence and weapons in the show, including their shoe products. We later find out what happened to Andy's father. He's Oh, that explains it. The next day at daycare, we find out that it's bring your good guy to school day because why does everyone have one? Also, how does Andy leave daycare without supervision? Like, where are the security guards or the staff members at the school? I'm very surprised how a six-year-old managed to travel Chicago without anyone harassing him, touching him, or even robbing him. We head to Eddie Caputo's house, which is the getaway driver from earlier in the scene. He has a lot of rats in his home. I wonder if they cook for him. Andy sets Chucky down so he could go take the longest sleek a six-year-old has ever taken, which is up to three minutes, which is the whole scene where Chucky's trying to kill Eddie Caputo. <laughs> Also, I'm very surprised Andy didn't flee the scene with Chucky. The police take Andy away from his mom until his story starts making sense. She threatens Chucky and then we get my favorite scene in Child's Play history. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! 
You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? I don't blame the movies for Chucky's escape. I mean, did you see how fast he runs? Karen finds the detective, and she starts to talk nonsense. Chucky is alive, and he killed Eddie Caputo. I took him home to my apartment. I was about to throw away the box that he came in when the batteries fell out. Don't you see? He's been moving and talking for days without any batteries in him. See, I threatened to throw him into the fireplace, when all of a sudden, he came alive in my hand. I, I, I dropped him, and he got up and ran out of the apartment. Good night, Mr. Barton. I don't blame him. I mean, it is a late night in Chicago. There you go, lady. May it bring you and your kid a lot of joy. She uses reverse psychology on the detective. And hey, it actually works. All right, don't believe me. Where are you going? She goes off looking for the peddler she bought Chucky from. She manages to find him with another woman, but he still tries to get his way with her out in the public. But luckily, the detective shows up. Then they start putting the clues together, and they find out that Charles Lee Ray is Chucky himself. How do you know that? Because I was there. I was the man who killed him. Why didn't you tell me? Not exactly the kind of thing you tell someone. He's not wrong about that, you know. Where did Charles Lee Ray live? I'm not a cop, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to give confidential information to the public, even for the sake of boning. 7.30, Stony Island, the south side. As the detective gets home, you start to question, how did Chucky get in the car? Does the smart detective not lock his car doors in the middle of the night of Chicago? Also, how strong is Chucky? And why doesn't the detective stop driving before he causes more accidents? Hey, look out! The next day, Karen's at Charles Lee Ray's house to look for more clues. And for some reason, the dickhead detective scares the sh out of her. They found out that Charles Lee Ray was into voodoo, so they went to go search for the source. Hi! Why didn't the voodoo guy kill Chucky when he had the chance? And why does he have that? Karen and the detective visit the voodoo guy. And look at that, he finishes the sentence before he dies. Meanwhile, Chucky looks for Andy in the wrong building? What? I'm not gonna lie, Andy's acting was pretty good in the scene. I'm very surprised nobody saw Chucky, or even the security, or didn't have any footage of him in the security cameras. I'm surprised Chucky didn't wait until after the doctor put Andy to sleep. He would have taken advantage. Chucky saves Andy, in a way, but why didn't the doctor just take off the helmet? Also, I really like how they use this scene with Chucky's legs. It's kind of realistic. I'm sure they used a small person, but that's... wow. Karen and the detective get to the scene, and they stumble upon a witness who actually saw Chucky, but she's in a mental institute, so I'm pretty sure they're not going to believe her. George, some child left their doll in the elevator. Ugly doll. Fuck you. Chucky manages to get to the chimney of the apartment building? Wait, do apartment buildings have chimneys? Chucky manages to finally capture Andy. In the middle of the ritual, he gets stopped by his mom and the detective, and of course he had to attack. No! Ah! I thought Chucky was turning him in, so how was he okay after getting shot from the fucking knee? What's wrong? Gun jam? It finally leads to this final climactic scene. Andy, no! Please! We're friends to the end, remember? This is the end, friend. <laughs> Two things, not only does that look terrifying, but how did the couch and the house not catch on fire? They finally kill him, or so we think they did, but he gets up again and tries to kill them. And that actually looks pretty scary, so I feel really bad for Andy right now. <laughs> that last two seconds wasn't really necessary. They keep shooting him piece by piece, but he still keeps coming back. It's like he's not even turning human at this point. The detective's partner comes and he calls 911 in under five seconds. Yeah, I got a cop down here, multiple stab wounds, but the Bruce Door apartments are North Grand Street, make it fast. All right, they're gonna be here in 10 minutes. Let's yeah, I'm pretty sure if you call a 911 operator in Chicago like that, the police aren't gonna come for you. Also, the detective's partner is a pretty freaking mood right now. But don't touch it. You understand me? Don't you touch one part. All right, look, make it easy, okay? Just relax yourself. Huh? So he does the complete opposite and starts touching Chucky's head. <laughs> they finally put an end to it by finally shooting him in the heart. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Thus ending this movie.
And that was Child's Play. This movie is very unique in my opinion in the horror movie genre. It takes an original story from the late 1980s into a very popular phenomenon of a murderous doll and its long collection of movies. I genuinely don't see many flaws for a film made in the late 80s with such smart and unique special effects that would leave you pretty entertained. The character chemistry between Alex Vincent and Catherine Hicks who played Andy and Andy's mother were amazing and I wouldn't change it for any other way. Chris Sarandon who played a great detective was very flawless and not to mention Brad Dourif the voice of Chucky who they casted perfectly for the role and I'm pretty sure you're not going to get bored listening to him for the next 33 years. A true classic never goes out of style. As for the storytelling, it simply left me quite entertained on a movie from the late 1980s. The only downfall is that you're always going to share the same critique on how they can easily kill Chucky since he's just a doll. And you all know I'm not one to criticize logic and common sense in a movie. So with all that said out of the way, I give Child's Play 9 Crazy Chicago Crackhead Mothers out of 10. Oh, lady. May it bring you and your kid a lot of joy. I really enjoyed going back to memory lane and being entertained. So I'll see you guys in the next video coming up soon, as well as the Chucky series coming out. And for those of you watching Halloween Kills this weekend, please enjoy yourself, stay safe, and most importantly, stay tuned. Bye-bye. He came alive in my hand. I, I, I dropped him and he got up and ran out of the apartment. Good night, Mrs. Barchman.